Welcome to part four of Heart to Home Bible Study. We are studying how our God is our and your supernatural Amen. provider. And I don't know about you, I have just been excited. There's just, there's a, a boost of faith. There's just a shot of joy that's in my spirit. I know yours as well. So it's super exciting. And it's also wonderful because we're hearing testimonies coming in about how God is, is just opening up doors of provision yes. and how He is providing where there seems to be no way. He is making a way in our bodies and health and finances and relationships. He's so good. He is good. And He's written us a love letter. Mm. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. As Amen. you said, it, it always corresponds. Yes, it mirrors. And so we're going to be looking at the Old Testament scriptures uh, talking about supernatural provision. Yes. And how that God is our provider. So we're going to talk about, number one, supernatural return. Mm -hmm. And so that's talking again about giving. Yes. You know, we talked about that last week, that when you give, God gives back to to you without limitation. I love Hallelujah. it. So Michelle, you're going to look at Psalms 37 verses 18 through 19. We have a lot of scriptures today. There are a ton of scriptures. So get your notebook, get your pen out. Yes. Feel free to pause, to rewind, share this with your friends. But uh, there's a lot of scriptures, but we're going to dive into the Word of God because the Word of God is the will of God. So yes. Psalm 37 and verse 18 through 19. 18 through 19. I knew that. It says the blameless. That's you and that's me. We Amen. have been made blameless, righteous, holy. He has redeemed us. Hallelujah. We are in right standing with the Father. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care. Amen. So we're under his, his shadow, under his wings, like we read of in Psalms 91, yes. Psalms 23. Uh, we see that we are under his protection. It goes on. It says their inheritance will endure forever. Yes, I love Hallelujah. That. Yes, the, the, there's so much more to life. You preached this sermon a couple of weeks ago. Where's your focus? That's is right. it on eternity or is it on the earthly things? That's right. And it's not a bad thing. I mean, we're, we're to store up right. like an aunt. Right. We're to, to leave an inheritance for our children. We're, we're to be a blessing. We're to, you know, have nice things. But we get so focused on earth and yeah, we get so I focused forget. on right now and we forget that we're living our right now for eternity. That's right. And this is what the scripture is telling us. There's an inheritance that will endure forever. Verse 19, in times of disaster, they will not wither. Say, I will not wither. I will not wither. Hallelujah. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. So when this earth is in famine, we, the children of, of God, the ambassadors on earth, for the kingdom of God, we will enjoy plenty. So another way of putting it is when you give and God has promised us a hundredfold return, oh, yeah. that's not affected by what the government's doing. Yes. It's not affected what our cities do. It's not affected by anything because we are part and in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So good. I love this. And so we need to understand supernatural return. Let's look at Genesis chapter 26. Verse 13, we're talking about Isaac. If you look at him, you go, what did he do? Oh, he showed us a lot. He not only redug the wells of his dad. That's right. And for some of us, that's where we're at right now. We're digging up the old and the new. It's the former and the latter range that's together. Right. That's the days that we're living in. But he also increased in a time of famine, a hundredfold. Yes. Uh, it goes on in verse... 13. 13. I'm not listening well today. She's not, I? but it's okay. It's normal. It's okay. Verse 26 and verse 13 uh, it says, uh, The man, that would be Isaac, became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. Now, provision is body, soul, and spirit. But here we are talking about actual physical increase. So gold, silver, cows. That's right. Whatever back in that but day. But we got to include this was during famine. This was during the famine. So this is during, like in 2008, there was the market crash. Isaac would have increased. The Great Depression, the market crash. Isaac would have increased. That's right. So think of those times just in our recent history where the economic standard has collapsed that doesn't affect God. That's right. That doesn't shake Him. That's right. Instead, He calls us to increase in those days. The times we live in does not affect God. Hallelujah. He wants His people to be blessed, and we see that. So now we're going to be looking at supernatural supply. I mm. love this one, but we're going to start with Psalms chapter 78, 
verses 23 through, uh, excuse me, 29, 23 through 29, and I love it. I'm going to try not to interrupt you. I don't, I didn't listen to where I'm turning to. Okay. <laughs> I'm really not listening to anybody. Psalm 78. I thought you said 28, and no. I'm like, I don't have that mark. Psalm okay. 20, 78, I may have said 28, <laughs> verses 23 through 29. I've got to drink my coffee. Okay, while she drinks her coffee, I'm going to read half the Bible here. Psalm 78, verses 23 through 29, it says, Yet he gave a command to the skies above, and opened the doors of of heaven. We read uh, that in Malachi chapter 3, right. how when you give, when you're obedient, and that's kind of the theme I'm hearing a yes. lot in, in today's study on part 4, is that obedience opens the floodgates right. of heaven. Right. Verse 24, God rained down manna for the people to eat, and he gave them grain, the grain of heaven. So a lot of theologians believe that manna is like a bread. I personally believe that it's Chick Fil A. Okay, well it's chicken, but Chick Fil A. Just but I have it in my tree. He, straight from heaven. He gave them bread from heaven. Those are like you know Mama's rolls. Oh, I know. Those are good. Bread from heaven. With, Go ahead. With slathered in butter. I know. Glory lots to God. of butter. Butter helps. That's the manna. Butter okay. makes everything better. Verse twenty-five. It says, "Human beings ate the bread of angels." That's right. Let that sink in. That is what the scripture of of God commanding us, Jesus commanding us, pray on earth as it is in heaven. So we can have supernatural. We can have miracles. We can have healings. We can have the food of heaven. I love it. Some of us are so worried about food. And, you know, go to the grocery store. Get some extra cans. Do whatever you want. You know, you you do you. You lead, be led by the Holy Spirit with that. Get that frozen astronaut food. Do That's what right. you want. Whatever you want to do. But when that runs out, because everything has an expiration, everything comes to an end, stand on the scripture. God, you're going to give me literally rolls fallen from heaven. But and it there's gets no better. calories. Go ahead. <laughs> Carb three. That's right. It gets better. In verse 26, or it goes on and actually says he sent them all the food they could eat. That's right. So it wasn't just like, oh, you get one piece of bread a day. That's right. It's not bread and water. It's it's overabundance. That's what right. is it? Jesus, he, he saw the, the fishes and the loaves multiplied, and what did they have? Leftovers. They have Glory leftovers. to God. Verse 26, he let loose the east wind from the heavens, and by his power made the south winds blow. The Holy Spirit is at work here. Yes, he Verse is. Verse 27, he rained meat down on them like dust. That's the Chick-fil-A. Well, it could be, or it also could be steak. But you don't like steak. I don't, but She but puts still. ketchup on her steak. Excuse me. How many of y'all raise your hand if you put ketchup on your steak? It's so wrong. No, it's But the meat, the meat coming down, I believe that was Chick-fil-A. Anyways, it said he rained meat down on them like dust. Birds like sand on the seashore. They fell from the sky. Chickens fallen from heaven. He made them come down inside their camp. They didn't have to go harvest it or no. dispatch or hunt. Came right to them all around their tents. Oh, it was around their house. Verse 29, they ate until they were gorged. Full. <laughs> Tummy ache full. Dang. He, it's like full. Thanksgiving up in here. He had given them what they craved. Do you, do you hear that? Desires of our hearts. He gives you the desires of your heart. What is it that you're craving? You say, well, I could really go for it. No, no, no. What is it that you're craving? Our heart, our ultimate heart crave needs to be Jesus. That's right. right? Like Moses. That's God right. says, tell me what you want. Tell me what you, you want. You just, you tell me what you want. This is like a genie in the bottle moment. You tell me what you want, I'll give it to you. And Moses craved more of God. He said, show me your glory. That's right. And because of that, God showed Moses his goodness. And, and that's what we're seeing here. He gave them what they craved, their that's heart's right. desire. That's what God does. But don't panic about going hungry. No. Don't do that. To me, this sounds like fresh bread, and it talks about chicken. And, and then it there's meat. Meat. We're going to be okay. This is like this is like Thanksgiving supper. Just this is down the buffet. Heaven. The buffet of heaven. That's right. He's giving us a taste of what heaven's going to be at that one buffet. And then the, the final, the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's, it's just, incredible. it's invading earth. So hold on to this, because for real, there are some of us who are truly concerned about the economic standing in food. Right. Like that is a real concern. Am I going to be able to buy food? And I'm, am I going to be able to get to food? Am I going to be able to, is there going to be enough food? That's right. You know what? God's going to cause it to That's fall right. from heaven. So let's start believing for that now. That's right. Start now. Now, Deuteronomy 
Yes, ma'am. Chapter 29. I'm going to listen this time. Verse 5. Because this is a scripture that I struggle with because I love to shop. But this one always reminds me that if I can't shop, God's going to take care of me. Which remember during the first, you know, slow the curve 15 days, the stores were closed. That's right. I saved a lot of money. Unbelievable the amount of money she saved. But if that happens and closed you know, stores shut down. Here's your scripture. Here's your scripture. Deuteronomy 29 verse 5. It says, Yet the Lord said during the 40 years, they're just wandering in the wilderness, yes. that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. See, that's a bad. sad, sad verse for me. <laughs> but imagine that for some of us, you know, potentially in the future. My bell bottoms would be in style. They would. And they, they would have worn In my 90s, hair clips. Those are now back. Really? Do you notice I'm trying to do the center part? If you want to, pumpkin, that's fine with me. And my hair doesn't like it, but you know what? I'm, I'm trying to be cool. It's interesting <laughs> though, in the 90s, there was a lot of things that were in fashion. We'll see. And they're I back have to go now. back just a little bit more. Yours would be the 70, 40 years. Yeah. Wow. Imagine that. Everything that, that once was comes back around. Yes, it does. But God said they never wore off. <laughs> never they never wore worn out. out. Amen. Okay, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 2. Oh, we're going this way. Verse 7. I love this, especially the last couple of words. Amen. Verse 7 in Deuteronomy chapter 2. It says, The Lord your God has blessed you in all the works of your hands. Just receive that right now. He has watched over you through your journey through the vast wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you, and you have lacked nothing. I love it. You are not in lack of, or you don't lack anything. What's so incredible is they literally saw, we all have heard manna from heaven, but did you know that he also rained down meat? I mean, that's not something they normally preach about. That's right. He rained down chickens and meat, or whatever the meat might well, have been. Well, it said bird. Bird. So. Turkey. Like, who knows? Well, I don't think it's going to go flying through the sky. Pigeons. I doubt it was pigeons. Our Jesus is Dogs better than that. And anything else. I don't know. But he rained down meat. He rained down protein. He rained right. down bread from heaven. The, That's right. The, the bread of angels. That's Glory right. to God. So he caused them to lack nothing. So we've looked at supernatural return, supernatural supply, and now we're going to look at supernatural harvest. And when we start to look in the Bible study, I said, I want these scriptures. So turn to Leviticus chapter 26, verse 10. I love what it's saying. It said, you will have such a surplus of crops that you will need to get rid of the leftovers from the previous year to make room for your new harvest. That makes me happy. I'm not a fan of leftovers, so glory. But, you know, right now it's kind of like harvest time. It you is. know, corn everywhere, <clears throat> beautiful, sweet, the wonderful corn. But you know what? God said you're not just going to have to hoard. Yes. I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to give you something new every morning. Hallelujah. His Amen. mercies are new. So if you have that tendency to hoard, like it's it's a natural earthly tendency yes, where you just is. wanna you wanna take everything that you can and have it for right now. If that's a tendency in your heart, I just pray that that's released off of you because yes. our like you said, our God, His <laughs> mercy is new every morning. Yeah. Just like the bird doesn't panic, it doesn't it doesn't say how where's my next meal coming from? That's right. How am I gonna take care of myself? Jesus reminds us of them. If His eye is on the sparrow, that's then right. we know that He watches over that's us. That's true. So we're going to turn to Amos chapter 9, verse 13. Again, it's just the Lord assuring us that he's got us taken care Amen. of. Amos chapter 9, verse 13 says, The time will come, says the Lord, our provider, when the grain and the grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested. Glory to God. You know, isn't that amazing? Because like I said, we're looking at cornfields right now. Harvest here in our, and, and then... The peaches that we talked about last week. Pumpkins. <laughs> and then Jesse will take Grace on a uh, bicycle ride. And he's like, here are all the apples that I yeah, collected. Yeah, apples and huckleberries. Like, it's harvest time in the natural here. It is. And you went, actually, huckleberry picking for the first time. Yeah, that was fun. But I'm just saying, there's more than enough. God has provided for you. Don't yeah. be concerned. Because he wants to give us his supernatural harvest because we've given him everything we have. Amen. Whatever it is, Father, that you want me to do, I'll do it. So, Michelle, let's look at 
1 Kings chapter 17, verse 4, we're talking about supernatural meals. Amen. I love this. <laughs> this is, if food is your love language, this like is mine. Her, yeah. she is just in hog heaven. I'm loving this. 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 4. Four. Four. You said nine, didn't you? No, I, I don't think. You may have to rewind, but I don't think I did. I may have. We're not doing good with our numbers no, today. No, we're not. We would not be winning at bingo. That's because I'm hungry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, pray for... I know. God, provide my chicken. Pray for the bread to come down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the story of Elijah being fed by the ravens. It says in verse four, uh, you will drink from the brook. God's giving him instructions. And I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he's causing the ravens, the birds, to supply food to Elijah. Is that one of the first door dashes? Yes. The door dash. Dash yeah. door. Door dash. Whatever they have. So God put in true. the order like and Uber it was delivered. He, he had him deliver. Can you believe God could created this way back when? This is back when As Elijah. his way to say, I'll take care of you, I'll, Elijah. Don't sweat it. I don't sweat it. And, and it's, it's not toiling. It's not panicking. It's not us trying to figure this out in the natural. God is supernatural. And he wants his supernatural way of thinking and being to invade our natural. Yes, he is. And like I said, be smart. Have a couple cans in the pantry. Get your astronaut yeah. food. What be do smart. Do? But don't let that be your source. The scripture says in the Old Testament, because we're just looking at the Old Testament. That's right. We have another next time Bible Part study. Part five. Again, just on the Old Testament. It's just Old Testament. This is just to build that foundation. But there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, Some trust in chariots. And some in horses, but we believe in the name of the Lord our That's God. Right. And Dad, so many years ago, probably 15 years ago, he said some trust in food, some trust in bullets, some trust in the the stock market, some trust in uh, real estate. That's right. But we believe and trust in the name of the Lord our God. This world's economy and what we put our resources into, you know what? Everything is fading. But God's word stands God's forevermore. Word. So we see a continuation of provision in chapter 17, verses 15 through 16. Okay, but I want to say this oh, is supernatural done. provision. And this is with the widow lady. Yes, this is with and the widow. And a lot of times we have people that will write us and say, I'm a widow, I'm a limited income. Yes. You know what? This shows us once again, he cares for you. Yes. And I love this. 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 15 through 16. It says that the widow, she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So again, there's obedience. The yes, there and is. Then, um, it went away. So there was food for every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. He so cares for us. Verse yes. 16. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word that the Lord had spoken by Elijah. His prophet. You know, and I love this because in my translation it said, she in the household, that would be the mm -hmm. widow and her child, did eat for a full year. Wow. Can you imagine not having to go to the grocery store for a full year? Because God provided the oh, oil and the flour. That's how much he loves us. He doesn't care what your status is. You're single, you're married, you're divorced, or you're just struggling. It doesn't make any difference. He's there to meet your every need. And it goes on and it says, for the jar of flour was not used up. He's not going to let you be used up and thrown out. Amen. His supernatural provision is more than enough. Amen. God is so good. Just Amen. receive that. He has not abandoned you. He has not forgotten no. about you. Instead, His mercy has poured out and it's new every single morning. And again, I've said several times, why am I born in this time? I would have loved the 50s guide. I would have loved the milkshakes and all the stuff that food. you have. You know, food again. And God said, you were born for such a time as this. You've been trained for that. And that's what he's saying to you. Yes. He could have taken us out a long time ago. But he knows our purpose is to bless others. And the only way we can learn how to bless others is to have the word in our heart and coming out of our mouth. So, like I said, a lot of you have already asked, but this is 20 Way God Supplies. And like I said, Michelle, there's so much in here about our covenant inheritance because the Lord needs it. We were actually in a situation just recently where we were planning on one thing and it just got ripped out from under us. In the natural. In the natural. And 
you know, we came home and we were praying and we absolutely, the Lord has need of it. Yes. And God opened up something above and beyond what we could have ever even asked for. And he will do the same yes. thing for you. So let us know if you would like these 20 ways and then the supernatural provision confessions. And I expect God to provide. I believe all things are possible. You know, all things are possible, even in the midst of what's going on in our world. It's not just yes. the United States. We need to be praying for those people in other places yes. and praying that God will open up their eyes and that their eyes will be open to the fact that he is always there for Amen. them. Amen. Hallelujah. So be encouraged. Be encouraged to know that your God is your provider. Yes. And if this is Old Testament, which we love the Old Testament, but if this is Old Testament, how much more under the work of the cross, Amen. under grace, a greater dispensation for you and for me, how much more for right now? Right. He provides our every need time and time and time again. So this week, be on the lookout for his provision. Know that he loves you. And we're excited for next week, part five on Supernatural Provider.